You know, it feels like every single weekend in America these days is a breeding ground for crime and criminals. When I scroll through the news from the weekend on Monday morning, what I see and hear is happening through our cities. The videos and stories makes anyone wince. And then I get angry and upset for the victims of the blatant, incessant, and rampant crime throughout Biden's America. Like I said, it's almost like a sad scorecard every Monday. These heartless thugs showing absolutely no mercy. But what's worse is that it's become so normal and so embedded that we're numb to it, that it happens in front of us and we even film it and we sometimes don't even react. What I'm saying is that the lack of shock is now shocking. All of it is encapsulated in a video of an attack that came out last week, a video that shows brutal human behavior and shows what exactly what I'm talking about. It's all just about how numb we've become in response to it all. Survival mode at its core. Last week, a man on the New York City subway assaulted a woman inside of a train car. Mind you, in the middle of the day, and mind you, in Mayor Eric Adams' city, one that just endured a mass shooting in that same subway system, and one that Adams pro promised to clean up and protect. The whole incident was captured on video. At least the video is working this time, unlike exactly where the mass shootings took place in the last subway last month. The video shows how a man wearing a white hoodie makes his way through the train. He sits down. Passengers flee the area where he sits, but the woman right next to him was unable to do so. She tried to leave, but the man reached for her hair, grabbed onto it, and pulled her back down to sit back down next to him. It's tough to even watch that video. It's so shocking and disturbing. The woman looked so distressed, begging others, other riders to help her, but not a single rider stepped up to help her. After a few moments, the man shouted at her and shoved her to another part of the train. Luckily, someone recorded that incident, and others watched and did nothing. That's where we are. In New York, police department says it's under investigation, but no formal reports have been filed, and that man is free to terrorize others. Can you believe we just sat there and watched that? There's another story of another low-life thug terrorizing cities without consequence. And that's just one incident, one of many that have taken place over the recent months in the city, in New York City subway system. And this kind of low-life thuggery is rampant in our cities, in Biden's America. Just this weekend in my hometown of Chicago, people were killed, five people were killed, 38 others wounded since Friday evening. And that seemed like a good week. And Mayor Lori Lightfoot's response, extending weekend curfews for minors, adding an hour, moving it from 11 to 10 p.m., and Lightfoot also banned unaccompanied minors from Millennium Park on weekend evenings. Hmm. Historic levels of shootings, murders, a rampant crime epidemic in Chicago, and Lori Lightfoot says the answer is keeping teenagers out of a park. In New York, in less than 24 hours, three people were killed, three more wounded, and a church was broken into, a $2 million tabernacle stolen, and an angel statue decapitated. But meanwhile, the city's Mayor Eric Adams gallivanting through the Met Gala with celebrities. Doesn't he look nice? Look at those lapels and cuffs. And while he does that, citizens of the city fear walking their own streets, taking subways. But sure, he's doing a great job, he says. We're going to break and destroy the iron pipeline that allows southern states in this country to produce weapons that end up on the streets and take the lives of our police officers. Mm -hmm. So Eric Adams says he's coming after the guns, obviously. The left's answer to everything, by the way. It's never about their lax measures, soft on crime DAs, to fund the police rhetoric. But then he admits that it's nearly impossible to get the guns off the street. So for every gun we remove from the street, five are coming in. Mm -hmm. Coming after guns is all, of course, optics. And the usual gun grab by the left is all about deflecting from their lack of strategy and solutions. We know it can be done. We know that cities can be saved with the right kind of leadership. We've seen it done under politicians who get it. Back in the 1990s, when Rudy Giuliani was mayor of New York City, he worked with then-police commissioners Ray Kelly and William Bratton and championed something called broken windows theory. The idea behind it was that if you ignore the smaller crimes, crimes like jumping subway turnstiles, panhandling, harassing people on subways, then more serious crimes like assault and murder will take place because people got comfortable with it, and it worked. 
Being tough on all crime worked. As arrests for misdemeanors increased, subway crimes of all kinds dramatically decreased. And then the number of more serious crimes decreased, too. Imagine that. All crimes are punishable, and therefore, it deters more crime and more criminals. But here are the hard stats. In New York City, subway crimes alone have gone up by 60% compared to last year. A very bad sign of the overall climate. Criminals know they can get away with it because they are. And the climate created by crime that Eric Adams has done very little about is creating a collective PTSD. Imagine this. In the very hours of Sunday, May 29th, loud noises were heard outside of New York City's Barclays Center, where fans were just starting to leave after the uh, Gervonta davis Rolando Romero boxing match. Soon, rumors of an active shooter spread throughout the crowd, causing chaos and a stampede that police say sent 10 people to the hospital. Criminal justice reform under leftist leadership is such a failure that even Democrats themselves try to get away with breaking the law. This week, when Ready for this? 82-year-old Paul Pelosi, husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, was charged with driving under the influence after getting into a car accident in California. Paul's bail was set at $5,000. $5,000. The man's worth $200 million. That's pretty low, given that net worth I just mentioned. But I'm surprised he had to pay at all. It starts at the top, and it trickles down. By the way, is Paul going to get special treatment? Is Nancy's husband going to get special treatment? Let's keep an eye on that story. It all trickles down. This isn't about Biden's America, but all of the leadership around him and all under him are failures, and there are consequences for crime at the top, and none for the rest either. That empowers criminals, even very young ones. In Florida, a fifth-grade student was arrested Saturday for threatening to pull off a mass shooting via text. Ten-year-old. A 10-year-old boy, a student at Patriot Elementary School in Cape Coral, Florida, was handcuffed and walked into a police cruiser Saturday evening for making a written threat to conduct a mass shooting. It's a copycat. Last week, a woman at an outdoor party in West Virginia fatally shot a gunman who opened fire into a crowd of guests. She fatally shot the perpetrator after he began shooting at dozens of people gathered for a party in Charleston. I wonder what the left had to say about that story. Since it was someone with a gun who did some protecting, who defended someone from killing other people, because their only answer is to come after the guns, but never about bad policy and about how their lack of strategy harms citizens. I keep coming back to that video of that woman being terrorized on that New York City subway in front of so many and in the middle of the day and was supposed to be one of the foremost cities of the world. The left destroys every facet of what makes this country great. And so admired, our strength, our resolve to protect every single American. Leaders of our cities have failed that basic core of leadership, and we're becoming numb to all of it, and it's dangerous.